a little bit of the work I did there when I initially moved to Las Vegas. But after that, um, being out of the scientific field, I, I really went stagnant and really didn't produce or do anything that I really considered worthwhile and just needed to get out of the Las Vegas environment completely. And uh, New Mexico, especially around the Albuquerque area, you know, you have two of the most prominent oh, yeah. national nuclear labs here, Los Alamos and Sandia, and, you know, the cities here are filled with Ph.D. scientists. And it, it just feel, it felt good to get back into, into the mainstream of things. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, in the short time I was here, in the first 18 months, uh, I just began to actually produce what I considered decent work. I started filing for patents and, uh, you know, as you know, working on the hydrogen system and uh Yeah, I want to talk a little bit things. about that, as a matter of fact. Yeah, patents and uh, on hydrogen fuel systems, and I, I know you've had them in your car. You've run your car on hydrogen, did it for a long time, right? Right. Mm -hmm. um, whatever patents you have, uh, what's this about a SWAT team coming in and grabbing all of your uh, uh, data and computers? I was. You know, I have to stop you there. We can't even touch that one. I spoke to my attorney after uh, I sent that Real? email. No and, kidding. No, we got to totally just not talk let about that, that, huh? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, at any rate, now that you're back or you're in New Mexico, you feel like you're you're doing good work in in your area once again. Yeah, and it's uh, yeah. I guess it's just a different mindset, and also the immediate area that I live in. You know, moving up isolated in in the mountains in the middle of a forest, and you know, on a lot of acres of land, and uh, is different than living right in the middle of Las Vegas and a you know, typically in town. So it's just, uh, it's a freer environment, and it, uh, I'm building my own research lab here, and uh, I don't know, it's, it's a lot more fertile ground for, for thinking and actually doing something serious. Well, I do get the sense there is still an awful lot you can't talk about. You said a couple of things, but then we can, we keep touching on uh, several things that still, there's aspects of it that, that you can't talk about. So uh, I would say a lot of your life still is surrounded by having to keep secrets. Are you good at keeping secrets? <laughs> no, I think it's been proven pretty well that I can't <laughs> do not. that. But it drives me crazy because the thing I would love, I could spend four hours on the phone more pissed off than you can imagine talking about this SWAT team thing, but I, my hands are tied right now. And oh, no. I, I, maybe I, in the future I can yeah. say something about yeah, no, that. But. No, attorneys are that way. I, I know when there's ongoing stuff. Uh, and they're right, of course. Ultimately, they're right. But it does kill you not to be able to talk about something. Yes, it does. Uh -huh. um, do you think that you're working on, without asking you specifically what you're working on, did any of let's try it this way? Did any of your experience at SWARM, what you saw and what you learned technically, have application in any work that you're either doing now or contemplating? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my, uh, yes. Um, now I, I'm obligated to ask you about your project, what, what you envision, what you're doing, even in general terms. Can you tell me a little bit about what you're working on? Well, there's a, there's, I, actually I'm overburdened with projects in progress. Mm. Um, as, mentioned, as you mentioned, the, the hydrogen fuel systems, uh, that's actually something I've been working on since the late 70s. And uh, that's finally come to fruition, and a lot of the materials needed long-term testing, and they've certainly had it now. Hmm. Um, that's per probably the biggest. Okay, perhaps you uh, can answer a hydrogen question for me. Now, it's, hydrogen is being touted. E even the president of the United States is touting it as the way to go. And, uh, but um, there are others, Bob, who say, look... Um, this is, in a way, all foolishness because, you know, to create hydrogen in amounts that would be good for the public to use, you know, cell, energy cells, fuel cells, uh, would require manufacturing, 
pollution, the use of energy. In other words, all you're really doing is finding a new storage facility and way to store energy that still has to be uh, produced, frankly, in the old-fashioned way. No, not really. Well, then lay it on me. Not really how. Well, first of all, there's, there's two trains of thought here. Um, the automotive industry, the president and his advisors are all going down the fuel cell path. And for those that don't know, a fuel cell is a device that takes gaseous hydrogen and oxygen, combines them, and makes electricity. And little fuel cell water dribbles out of it because when the hydrogen and oxygen combine... That's the only, the only byproduct water. is water. Right. And, and so you uh, could use these in cars or to power homes or whatever, right? Right. Well, you can use these things, and the, the, their car of the future has fuel cells and an electric motor, and that's how the car is powered. Now, that's, that's very efficient. It's around 35% efficient okay. uh, overall, and uh, that is pretty neat. However, all the technology is not there. The vehicles will be fantastically expensive. None really exist right now in, in production. And what about the billion cars that are on the road now? <laughs> what, is everybody going to dish out $175,000 for a new car? And on top of that, they want to just replace gasoline pumps with hydrogen pumps and sell you the fuel again. All right. So, uh, let's get back to refuting this. In other words, no matter how it works, Bob, and it's, it sounds like you're almost more on the negative than the positive side of this, but, I mean, no matter how it works, aren't, conventional fuels going to have to be used in copious amounts to produce these cylinders of of uh, of hydrogen no i don't How do the you system figure? that i came up with first of all converts a conventional car to burn hydrogen conventionally and with and no uh, fuel with stuff. how much cost well let me get to that in a second right. the actual conversion is not that difficult not that terribly expensive um I have, I have not used any energy producing any of the hydrogen that I make as far as power off the grid, fossil fuels, or whatnot. Hydrogen is easily electrolyzed by water. You know, if you need to prove it to yourself, take a 12-volt battery, put both wires in the water, add a pinch of salt, and you'll see bubbles coming off of one side. Well, some off the other, too. That's and that would be hydrogen. Right. Anyway, it's easily produced, and it can be produced uh, with solar panels or a wind turbine. I use solar panels. That's where all my hydrogen comes from. I fill up the Corvette with it, and we drive 700 miles on it. And the car will also run on gasoline. All right. So, all that's, right. Uh, so that's perfected. I mean, it works, right? Right, and it, it's worked for years and years and years. All right. Let's say I buy a conventional automobile for, I don't know, 20, 30 grand, something like that. Um, what would it cost to convert a car like that to hydrogen? Your, well, the big... The big hang-up right now has been the actual storage medium. You don't want to store hydrogen as just a compressed gas because it's dangerous, it's flammable, and on top of that, you need thousands of times more space to hold the hydrogen than you would an equivalent amount of gasoline. Okay. So it, it just doesn't work. Right. You don't want to store it liquid because that's cryogenic, it's dangerous, it's just a big thermos bottle in your tank, and it's another big headache. The, the third way is the best way, and that's a metal hydride. And this is a granular material that absorbs hydrogen like a sponge absorbs water. Mm -hmm. And it only releases the hydrogen when it's heated. And with, when it's not being heated, I can fire incendiary bullets through the hydride tank, and it just smolders like a cigarette. So it's extremely safe. Wow. And this is the material that I store the hydrogen in, in the vehicles and for home use. Is this the subject of a patent? Yes. It is. Yeah. Now, there are various hydride materials, and some were actually very difficult to get a hold of because some of them, like lithium-6 deuteride, which is a, a hydride, actually, well, the material I use is a hydride, the only use for that material is in thermonuclear bombs, and it's restricted, obviously restricted for sale. Yes. Um, and the only reason some of these hydrides are manufactured was for the weapons industry, and they're done so in such small quantities, the cost was very high. Hmm. For instance, to convert the Corvette just for the tanks of hydride, we were looking at $15,000.
without the hydrogen conversion itself. So this is, you know, that's that's a a pretty large price tag. Out of line right now. Right. But if if, if this pro, uh, whole thing were perfected and you had access to the materials and it were done in mass, I'd like to get some idea of what it would cost to convert. Well, we've been working with the hydride manufacturers, and uh, they promise a 70% reduction in cost in volume production. So, Does that make it viable? Very much so. I mean, wouldn't you pay between $4,500 and $6,000 to have your car converted? You'll have your hydride.